Welcome back everybody. Now today I'm taking a look at four simple kitchen gadgets to see if they actually work. That's today's video. So for today's video, I picked out a collection of items that, that had to meet three criteria when I was planning this video out. Number one, they had to be relatively cheap. They're all under 25 bucks. Number two, they have to have a single function, none of these 15 and one gizmos. And number three, they have to be very simple to use. And as you'll see in the test I'm about to show you, they're all quite simple. Without hesitation, let's get right to the first item, which is the peanut butter scooper, spreader, and scraper, the PB Jife. Here we go, PB Jife. Ultimate peanut butter knife spreader. Clean the jar, cut and stir, and no messy hands. Look how long this thing is, huge. When I saw pictures like this, I thought these were pretty small jars, so it didn't look like a very big knife. When I see it in person, it's it's quite large. I mean, it's it's very large. They do say that you can use it to clean the bottom, the rim, or the sides. Kind of a bold claim here, change your life with PB Jife. Change your life. Well, I guess for maybe hardcore peanut butter fans, you might change your life. Right, here we go, it's, a, it's a, an interesting looking, nice looking. Now the claims on this are that it has a super long blade and I can confirm that's pretty long. They say it's good for spreading, scraping large jars, keeping knuckles clean, good for stirring thick spreads, includes a notch. This helps you get the bottom and around the rim area. Now for those on Amazon who liked it, they said that it was easy to get to the bottom of the jar, also good for jelly or margarine. Uh, those who didn't like it, they said that it bends easily. Not good for cold peanut butter. It's too big. Here it is. It's a, it's a very large knife. This has a nice handle on it. It feels pretty sturdy. Uh, you know, really what's interesting about this is this curved end here, which is kind of interesting. It allows you to get around the edges, around the bottom. So uh, let's uh, take a look here. Fortunately, I have not one, but two rather large jars of peanut butter that are almost empty. So that's going to be perfect. This seems to be kind of geared towards scraping the bottom out. So let's see what we got. I've got creamy and crunchy, so I don't discriminate. So you see, don't have a lot in there, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna try doing some basic scooping and then I'm gonna try doing some basic scraping. I'm gonna get a baseline scrape here. Like, see, like, the problem is that when you wanna get deep in here, sometimes you, you have to get your hand in there. You get, you get peanut butter in your knuckles, and never good. So, I mean, and also scraping around the edges is also kind of problematic. You kind of have to, you can do it, you can do it. It depends on, on the jar also. So you have to get, kind of get your hand close to the action, which you don't always want to do. So these knives are okay for that, but the geniuses at the PB Jife have come up with this. My hand is safely away from the battle zone here. Uh, you get a lot on there, that's a nice big scoop. I'm gonna try to scrape th through the edges with a regular knife and then see what I can get that's left behind with the PB Jife. Let me see if I can get, okay, I'm going, going around the edge here. I've gone around the edge. Let's see. Let's see if I can salvage even more with this one. Oh, I did, I did get more. It wasn't a lot, but I did get more that the other knife could not get. Let me get some of this peanut butter out of here and go along the bottom. I'm gonna use the, the old school knife for that. All right, so I'm kind of scraping along the bottom. You know, it's not easy with this because you end up, the tip is kind of thin. You have to kind of go in there with the tip. It's not very large. Now I've got quite a bit still left in there. So a lot of scraping and not, not really getting a lot. So you know, a lot of people would probably just give up there because it's not worth all the scraping. But let's try the PB Jife and see what we got here. Well, this. Now I couldn't even get nearly this much with a regular knife, so that's already better. Look at this, wow. Probably got about two or three sandwiches worth already out of there. Try the edges here a little bit. Now, as you can see how high up the peanut butter's gotten on here, if I was using this knife, that would have probably been on my hand. Now, a lot of people would probably use a small spatula, but you're, you're gonna keep your hands away from it with this better, I think. If, uh, I kind of see the benefits of the PB Jife. I'm a little bit skeptical, but uh, I'm, starting to, I'm starting to get it. Let's try some more things. I'm going to the uh, obscure stuff with some sunflower butter, which if you've ever tried this before, it's quite good. I, I actually really like this. But sunflower butter is kind of like natural peanut butter where it's kind of, it's kind of oily, it needs to be stirred. Uh, let's see if this is going to be too big for it or not. Oh, not a problem. Actually, it's quite good. Once again, I'm, I'm keeping my hands safely away from the, the dirty zone here. I can even, I can stir it quickly. All right, I think this is working pretty well. At least you want to have a sun flour, butter, and jelly sandwich. Now, I know that was just standard stirring, but honestly, stirring it with this big handle and, and having such a, a large knife to stir with, so far, it's doing pretty well. All right, let's try making a quick sandwich here. Uh, I'm supposed to do the, the jelly or the jam first. I've got this nicely cleaned off. 
You ever go to open a jar of peanut butter and there's some jelly in there? What's worse, that or when you open jelly and there's some peanut butter in there? Both are bad, but I feel like the peanut butter in the jelly jar is more of a crime than the other way around. But I digress. I do, you can get a lot in one scoop. I really like that. Almost too much. Oh, it spreads nicely too. It spreads almost kind of like having a, a, a spatula. It's very nice for spreading. Now we'll try the, the chunky peanut butter next. Once again, I'm going to kind of scrape around the bottom here. And you can really pull a lot out with just one shot. This, this widened end is very good for sp I like it. I'm <laughs> Well, this might be one of those specialty items that only appeals to a small segment of society. Well, I happen to be in that small segment because I eat a lot of peanut butter sandwiches. And this is something I would think I would find quite useful. I'm going to keep using it. So if, you're, if you've been wondering about the PB Jife, I will say it actually works quite well. All right, so say you're done with your PB Jife. You got to wipe it off with a paper towel. And that leads me to my second item, which is actually a paper towel dispenser called the OXO Good Grips Simply Tear. Now, I know the paper towel dispensers aren't exactly the most exciting things, but this one's quite useful. And I actually bought it out of a need for something, not because I want to do a video of it, but this actually allows one-handed tearing of paper towels, supposedly better than the average. So let's take a look and see how that went. Well, here's the OXO Simply Tear. This is how it came in a box from Amazon, just like this. I wanted to show you how it arrived. I've not touched it yet. Well, I just touched it now. This actually has a 4.7 rating with almost 13,000 ratings. That's a very impressive number. I paid 25 bucks for this, which seems a lot for paper towel holder, but to me it was a necessity. I had to do something about my old one. Convenient carry knob. One hand design for quick cleanup. Stainless steel construction, which I hope doesn't get a lot of fingerprints on it. Spring activated arm. Kind of oddly satisfying. Non-slip base. I guess there is a ring around the bottom there. Large capacity can hold any size roll. Now the claims on Amazon can tear a single paper towel with just one hand, won't unravel, and holds any size brand of paper towel. On Amazon, those who liked it, they said it worked as advertised for one-handed operation, works on large size rolls. Those who did not like it said it doesn't work as well when the roll isn't full, still requires two hands, and the tension arm is kind of weak. Let's check it out. All right, let's take a look at the OXO Simply Tear. 25 bucks for a paper towel dispenser, it better be worth it. Now I've always used this one, which I mean, it looks nice, but it doesn't have any function other than just holding the paper towel. Can't tell you how many times I've reached over this trying to do a one hand operation and failed miserably. That's the reason I found this one. I, it wasn't really for a video. I was just looking for something that could be a one handed operation and this had extremely high ratings. So I figured it was time to retire this old model, but this one, you know, there's, there really isn't any handheld operation. It's just, sometimes I can get it, sometimes I can't. Depends on what angle I'm going from, but really it's, it's not a one-handed operation. There, I just got two of them. So it looks nice and that's about it. Let's get that out of here. Now for the star of the show, it's the OXO. All you have to do is pull back the tension arm, stick it on there. Now I know that it's just a paper towel dispenser, but I didn't watch the video just to make sure I'm doing it the way they show. And they're showing people pulling it from this direction with the tension arm over here. And haven't, I haven't tried it yet. So this is my first attempt, but let me, let me just try it like this and see what happens. Oh, yeah, what do you know? I got one. Let me try another one. You do have to kind of give it a yank. I don't think you can go slow with this. Let me see, let me go slow. See, going slow, not gonna work. Let me try a couple more. Oh, I only got two on that one. That wasn't that impressive. Come on, OXO. 25 bucks for this thing. If you give it a quick snap, it definitely works well. I was just thinking that people that left negative comments of this said the tension arm was weak. I wonder if maybe they were doing it with the tension arm facing them, because it's gonna pull it away at that point, so it's not gonna work. But I'm not saying everybody did, I'm saying that's a possible problem that some people have. Maybe they were just doing it with the tension arm facing toward them, which you're not really supposed to do. I don't think, let me try one. Well, I, I got that to work too. Let me try a few more. Maybe it works both ways. I don't know why they said it didn't work. I'm not having a problem with it. I'm just sitting here tearing them off one at a time. What I'm going to do now, which is going to be an OCD nightmare, is I'm going to pull all of these off here and see if it gets less efficient as the roll gets smaller because some people said that it did do that. So let me get all these off of here and see what happens when it's down to the last few paper towels. Probably a good time for some fast motion here.
timeout. I just had my first error here. I pulled it and a whole bunch of them came off. Let me see. Well, we get kind of far along the roll, but uh, let's see if that was just a, maybe a one-time problem. I guess we'll go back to our regularly scheduled fast motion. Oh, it happened again. Maybe we're getting closer to the, uh, the roll being uh, problematic. That's how much roll is left, so it's getting, getting smaller. One thing I've also noticed as I'm getting further down the, in the uh, roll is that, and this isn't a big, this is not a big deal, but I'm getting some of these where you get that little corner there. That's uh, not aesthetically pleasing, but not really functionally any problem. Had it happen again. Uh-oh. Twice in a row now. Uh-oh. Uh Hold the phone. We got some problems here. It's less than perfect in Oxoland. Oh, and my, and my triangle's getting larger too. It's working, but as the roll gets smaller, it's not quite as good as when it started off. There we go. Something I've never done before. I've never taken all the paper towels off a roll in one, in one shot. I guess, you know, check that off my, off my bucket list. <laughs> Something I can say I've done. It's also hard to keep them in a, in a straight stack here. All right, we're down to the last few here. Let's see what happens. Oh, we're down to the last. That's it. That's it. I, you know what? I'm going to say that was about a B plus. It was not perfect. You've got some of these little triangle, like where it picks a piece from the, the previous one, but it worked pretty well. I mean, far better than this one ever did. This one never worked like that. But my burning question though, is if you came home and saw this, the paper towel empty and all the paper towels pulled off there, how would you react? Some people wouldn't be too happy about that. But I think the OXO Good Grip Simply Tear may not be perfect, but it's good enough. I think if you're looking for one-handed paper towel dispenser, this is probably going to do the job. It's pretty durable. And I would say of all the paper towels I pull off, there are only a couple times that I have a problem with it. Most of the time, it was pretty, uh, pretty easy. I will definitely be replacing this with this. So in about a year, I'll let you know how this is going. Going back to another specialty knife here. Next up is the Butter Once. This is actually a knife that's really designed for putting butter on corn. That's a very specific use for it. And let's take a look and see how that review went. This is the Butter Once Corn Butter Knife. There it is, a very attractive looking uh, piece here. Uh, I paid 10 bucks for this. Uh, the claims are that it's the easiest way to butter corn. Just slice, scoop, and spread. No more greasy fingers. Now those on Amazon who did like it, they said it's easy to use, easy to clean, and a great gift idea. Now those who are not so happy with this said it's poorly made and does not work as intended. The main point of this knife is that it has a curvature to it, so it kind of conforms to the corn on the cob. So let's check it out. Fresh corn here, and I've got butter. Room temperature and right out of the fridge. So we'll try both. What I'm supposed to do here is just basically cut off a pat of butter, and if you see, it's rounded. It's rounded. Rounded. And that supposedly allows you to apply the butter to the corn more easily. Let's try it out. It is a bit oddly satisfying. This is also a little bit more butter than I usually use, but I know some people like to slather it on there. I'm not much as much of a slatherer than some people, but I'm slathering. I'm partaking of the slathering. That's a, that's a lot of butter. Just want to see how it works. It, it works. I mean, it definitely works. And it is somewhat oddly satisfying. All right, now we're going to try some butter right out of the fridge. So this is a little bit colder, a little bit harder. Let's see. It's going to take a little bit less than last time. All right, still, it's still cut nicely, uh, a nice rounded shape to it. I don't, I don't see a big difference between the room temperature and out of the fridge as far as the application with the knife goes. Roughly the same, it's just going to take longer because this is, uh, this is still cold. And I, I, I would not normally do out of the fridge uh, butter for corn of the cob. Some people do, I don't, but I'm just trying to cover all my bases here. Let's try a regular knife with the room temperature butter here. I mean, I guess it's, I guess it's a little bit more difficult because you had a flat knife and a round ear of corn. I'm going to say it's better. I don't know if it's a lot better. There's some range of betterness that there is. I'm not sure how far along the range that is. It's better. I'm not sure if it's necessary. If you eat a lot of corn on the cob and you don't like the way it goes on with a normal butter knife, this is probably a great product for you. I'm not, I'm not sure it's a great product for me, but 
Everybody has a difference of opinion, right? So I'm not sure that this is something that I'm going to use. I don't have much of a problem applying butter with a butter knife, but if you do, this could be a good product for you. And finally, this is my very simple looking gadget called the Fridge Monkey. It allows you to stack cans and bottles in your fridge or elsewhere. Let's take a look and see how that review went. All right, here it is, the Fridge Monkey bottle stacking mat. They say it's just for bottles, but they also show it being used for cans. Uh, it cost me 10 bucks. Uh, not much of an unboxing, was it? Uh, the claims are that it has a grooved mat, which enables stacking of cans, bottles, jars. Non-slip holds 10 cans. Uh, it takes up much less space in the fridge, flexible and portable. Now, those who liked it on Amazon said the bottles and cans don't move around. Safe space, good for organization. Those who did not like it said, uh, several people said it was too small and it's not good for wine bottles. All right, let's take a look at the Fridge Monkey. What an interesting name and an interesting design too. Now it has seven slots here. I don't think you can use seven at a time though, but I'm gonna try a few different things here and see how they work on this table. And then I'm gonna put it in the fridge and see how they work in a real world demonstration. Let's start with something basic like some cans. So let me just, I have not used it yet. This is my first use. So you just rest it on here. Okay. It seems pretty solid in these slots here. So that's, uh, that's good. Okay, so I can definitely only fit four on this bottom row. And then we just stack on top of there. Now, I was worried the pyramid might actually be unsteady, but it's quite steady. So, hey, what do you know? Huh? Wow, that actually, not only does it work, but it's actually kind of an attractive display. I guess if you had them at a party or something, it's, it's not going anywhere. I don't want to push it too far, but it looks like it's not going anywhere. Let's try a few more things before we go to the fridge. How about some cheap wine right here in the first slot? Okay, you can't go in this. You have to go right in the center with this one. All right, so we can get fit three on the bottom of these bottles of wine. Uh, these are kind of standard size. Uh, I have the cheap wine on the bottom. We're going to go a little higher and maybe a little bit better. So then I think we're supposed to just kind of stack a couple of Merlots on top of this. Like a cherry on top, we're going to have Snoop Dogg. Here's how it looks from my perspective. I think it looks pretty nice. There we go. Look, not too bad, really. Very cool. All right, so far I think we're two for two, so let's keep going. I wonder how it'll hold some Gatorades. Let's try these out. Once it goes in that notch, it doesn't move around that much. I just don't know how many we can fit in here. Let's see. All right, so probably kind of like the wine. All right, so we're gonna get three in the bottom once again. All right, that looks good. I think that's gonna be too tall for most fridges though. I don't think you're gonna be able to put this many Gatorades stacked up. I'm thinking more top shelf, so probably not quite as vertical as this is showing, but there are instances where you could probably do something like this. Uh, let me keep going and see what else I can try. Right, so apparently these days, plastic bottles are a lot easier to find than glass bottles as far as soda goes, but let's see. So we can fit four across the bottom with this size bottle. All right, so just like the cans, we can get 10 stacked up here. This is pretty tall again too. Um, but it is pretty sturdy. It's not going anywhere. All right, so I think I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, let me try in the fridge and see how it works. I'm gonna try it in the top shelf where I don't have as much vertical space and see what I can do there. Real world situation in the fridge here. Let's try a couple different scenarios here. Once again, we have our low end wine on the bottom where it belongs. Can we keep stacking it? Let's see. Ooh, it's gonna be close up top. So far, so good. Now, can I get Snoop up there? Uh, no Snoop. Oh, oh well. If it, my shelf was a little bit lower, it would fit up there. Sorry, dog. All right, let's try some cans here. See what we can stack up on that. I don't think I'm gonna get my full pyramid again either. Once again, depends on how deep your shelf is. Can we fit more? Oh, we can't fit more. Oh, well. All right. Well, once again, I can always lower the shelf, but I'm not going to, but I could, but I'm not. Overall, I think that, you know, if this looks like something that you would like in your fridge, it works uh, quite well. Well, that's it. They all actually pr work pretty well. I would say my favorite is probably going to be the OXO Good Grip Simply Tear because I needed this out of necessity. I'm glad it works because I've actually wasted too many paper towels trying to do a one handed pull and it doesn't work. It may not be 100%, but it's close enough for me. I think right behind that would be the PB Jife. As someone who is a 
probably on the fringe as far as an amount of peanut butter sandwiches I've made in my life. Uh, this is something that I'm actually going to use quite often. The other two I'm going to try to work in the rotation. I'm not sure if they're going to make it into the kitchen or into the boneyard, but I'm going to keep using them for a while to see how they actually work. So if you've used any of these products, tell me what you think in the comments below. If you like this video, please consider subscribing for more videos like this. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.